they're going to survive. Uh, but there's still a lot, a lot that they've got to go through. And in terms of the two juveniles, we're not getting names, we're not getting charges, but we did just learn a little while ago, Ashley, uh, that they're going to be in court tomorrow, family court, and that prosecutors intend to start the process of charging them as adults. But the way it works in Missouri, we're told, uh, that process could take weeks. I just find it so weird to hear nobody's been charged, but they'll be in court tomorrow. That just to me is very backwards, but maybe I don't know the way it works there. So, and by the way, Brian, it just occurred to me as you were saying, you're in front of the children's hospital and thank God that they're gonna survive. I'm really sick and tired of saying, aren't we lucky that we survive mass shootings? Aren't we lucky when we don't die? Mm. Gosh, aren't we lucky that all we have are bullet holes and trauma for the rest of our lives? Aren't we lucky? I'm sorry, I just had to get that off my chest. It just makes me mm, just seethe. Do we know at this point, Brian, if there's anyone else involved other than the two juveniles that they've got detained? Yesterday, I feel like there were three. Now today, it's two. Do they think there are more out there who are um, part of this dispute? Another mystery, and you're right. Yesterday, they detained three people. It was two juveniles and one adult. Today, we find out they released the adult and only held on to the two juveniles. Why? Did they have the wrong person? Do they not have enough evidence? Uh, we don't know. But I can tell you, actually, because we've done stories here, Kansas City is a mess when it comes to crime and gang violence. Uh, for four consecutive years, they've had more violent crime than ever before. They had the highest number of murders ever last year, 181 murders. There are 400 plus uh, officer vacancies. So this is a problem that they struggle with here. I know the Super Bowl headline is what's getting attention, but for the people who live here, they're not even surprised by this and the gang violence, and they're really frustrated they're not getting more information today. So the video that's playing between us is playing silently right now, and it's a perfect description of what happened in that actual moment. I don't know. Can I just ask the control room if we have sound on that video? Because I want to stop down for... It's amazing. Roll it one more time so you can see the moment the gunshots are fired, and then so, and then you can watch just everyone scatter so quickly. Uh, it, yeah, we're gonna recue it, Brian, and then I just want to play it from the top so that everyone can hear the silence and then hear the gunshots. So here we go. It's so unfathomable to think of those people who were at that epicenter when that happened and how they ran into each other. It's crowded. So the kinds of injuries that happen as well. Look at that. Look at that. It's just, it's unfathomable. Uh, a little bit more about the, the victims and, and how they're all doing. Were you able to, to talk to anybody today just to talk about conditions and, and where we stand with people, like the kids behind you getting out of the hospital? Yeah, so there's only a handful of kids who are still in the hospital, which really is a miracle. I mean, you look at that video, there were a million people out there. The fact that 23 people got shot, we're hearing that perhaps some of the bullets actually ricocheted off the ground and struck people in the leg. So uh, there's so many families thankful that this wasn't, wasn't more serious. Uh, so most of the kids are out of the hospital. You did mention it's so tragic. The one woman who was killed, her name's Lisa Lopez Galvin. She goes by Lisa G, very popular on the radio here. What's so sad is that she was there with her son. Uh, he was shot in the leg. He's now been released from the hospital. The family at first thought maybe she had been rushed in for surgery and was gonna survive later found out that she died there at the scene. And what's even sadder, Ashley, is they have extended family members, uh, two young children, two distant cousins, who were also out there uh, at the festival, at the rally, and they were also shot. Those two kids also ended up in the hospital. So oh. this is a family that is suffering oh. uh, tonight. Yeah, I couldn't believe, we just found that out tonight, Ashley. It's terrible. Um, there was this vigil tonight for her uh, and for the other surviving victims, uh, where, where friends of hers spoke. Uh, take a listen to one of those friends. She knew you. You were her family. There's not a person on the street she would meet. She would not talk to. She loved everybody. She was a big part of the community. 
not only the Hispanic community, the West Side community, but Kansas City community. She was here to do good. She was a good person. This was senseless, senseless. It's just so sad, Ashley. Uh, you see the, the images from the vigil tonight. There were quite a number of people out there. Uh, and also people now praying for her son. Again, he's out of the hospital, but he was also injured and, and shot in the leg. So many of uh, Lisa Lopez Galvin's family members affected by that and then a whole community as well. And, and remember, um, the, the kids all had the day off school, so that's why there were so many kids at this um, parade and rally. Mm. Uh, Brian Enton, thank you for doing this reporting. Keep us apprised if you hear anything about charges, because it's possible those charges will be announced in the next hour. So do just break into programming and let us know. Thank you for this. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.